If you said yes to our last video, which is about, you know, hey, would now be a good time to improve my relationship, to better my life, to better my spouse and marriage? Well, if you said yes, I want to do that. Today, we're going to talk about how. How to pick the right marriage counselor. Because not all counselors are the same. Hey, I'm Brett, a licensed psychotherapist and executive director for The Gathering of Good People. And today, like I said, today we're going to be looking at how. The how, you know? How are you going to find the right counselor? Not only the right counselor, like personal fit for you, but but somebody that actually is good at doing couples counseling. Because that's a specialty. That's a really a specialty that not everybody knows. And sadly, and we'll explain that in a minute, licensure is probably not your best, best example or, or best way to find a good couples counselor. Because there's a lot of people that are licensed as couples counselors, marriage and family counselors, that don't really understand how to do marriage and family counseling, which sounds really weird. So let's get into what's going on. Well, when it comes to licensure as a mental health professional, there's three basic licensures you need to understand. There is the MD, there's the PhD, and then there's the master's level. Well, at the MD level is your psychiatrist, right? Your psychiatrist is a medical doctor, and that's why they specialize in medications. And that's why they, you know, they're, they're dispensing the drugs, right? Well, there's a second level of licensure, which are the PhD licenses. Those are the psychologists, not school psychologists, they're not PhD, but licensed clinical psychologists are PhD levels. And what that means is, yeah, you get the PhD, but then you also get a licensure that goes at that level. Now, there's other people that have PhDs, but they have a master's level license, which is clinical social worker, marriage and family therapist, or a couple of examples. So I could be Dr. Brett and have a PhD, but because I didn't get a license as a psychologist and I licensed instead as a marriage and family therapist, for example, that's a mid-level, that's a master's level licensure. And, and so I wouldn't be technically called a psychologist. I'd be more in the category of licensed psychotherapist. Now, that's super confusing already, right? But it's even more confusing because a lot of people... They go for the licensure as a, for example, marriage and family therapist because they can do everything. They can do everything that a psychologist could do. They can do everything that a PhD doctor could do in terms of treatment, diagnosis, all of that kind of stuff. But it's, it's an easier licensure and it's a, it's a licensure you can get without having to have the PhD really, actually. That leaves, unfortunately, the consumer really super confused. Because if I'm licensed as a marriage and family therapist because I want to treat people with depression and anxiety and all that kind of stuff, um, but I don't have to and I probably don't even have a lot of specialized training in marriage and family therapy because that's maybe not my interest. That's maybe not really where I want to focus or have been focusing. And so just because somebody has a, an MFT degree doesn't make them a real qualified or, or even competent marriage therapist. So it's going to be on you. It's going to be on you to ask some questions. It's going to be on you to maybe do a little bit of research in terms of who would be the best fit for you. And, and I actually find um, that this is, this is really an, kind of an important step for you. There are a lot of therapists out there that are licensed marriage family therapists, and they say, yes, I do marriage therapy, yes. Um, but what they really do is they do individual therapy. And they're really good at individual therapy. In fact, I, I have a lot of my friends and colleagues licensed marriage and family therapists. But what they end up doing a lot of times is that a couple will come in for couples counseling. That's, you know, what they're asking for. And within like one or two or three sessions, that therapist has got them already divided. Not in conflict, but, but divided in the sense of, hey, you know, those are some really important issues. We probably should do some counseling on that. And they're starting to see the wife as an individual or they're seeing the husband as an individual or both. 
and 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 they're working really on individual issues like anxiety or past trauma or depression, really appropriate issues, very, very appropriate issues. Don't get me wrong. But they're not really working on the couplehood. They're not working on the relationship itself. When I see patients in my office, especially when I'm working with couples, I always think that there's three people in my office. Well, besides me. The first person is, you know, the client, the, the guy, the gal, their spouse. And then I always think of the marriage as the third. Because the marriage is its own thing. And that's what a lot of individual therapists don't understand. And so when they're treating couples, oftentimes they're just treating them as if they were treating an individual. And in fact, I've, I've actually had friends and colleagues tell me straight up and straight out that they find it, you know, once you work on the individual's issues and you work on the individual themselves, eh, a lot of times you don't even need to do the couple's work because you've solved whatever problem or address whatever issue. Eh, I personally disagree about that. I think that when you have a hammer, everything becomes a nail. Now, what that means is that when I'm a psychiatrist and I'm a medical doctor and I prescribe medications, you know what? Everybody that comes in my office, everybody that walks in the door, they're going to walk out with a pill. They're going to walk out with something some pill bottle because that's my tool. That's that's what I do. And so but I'm going to make sure they walk out with some kind of pills in their hand. Somebody walks in and they want um, couples counseling, but I'm really, I'm really good at individual counseling. Um, probably what I'm going to do is I'm going to probably do individual counseling with them. Even though they say they want couples counseling, I'm going to probably do individual counseling because that's what I do. That's what I, that's what I know. That's what I understand. That's what I'm comfortable with. When I'm looking for a couples counselor, what I want to make sure is that this person not only has a license, and, and it doesn't even have to be a license as a marriage and family therapist. I, I have a great friend, and I'm going to do a shout out right now, a great friend, Todd Krieger, over in Huntington Beach, I used to work with together for years, and he's a licensed clinical social worker, but he specializes in couples. That's what he does. And, and so the licensure almost doesn't even matter. So here he is, a social worker, but, but he's got an extra training and he's got an extra expertise working with couples. So that's the first thing I would do is I would ask, do you have an expertise working with couples? Meaning, do you have extra training beyond the, the normal training, the basic, you know, I went to school and got my master's and all that kind of stuff. Do you have extra specific training and do you specifically work with couples? I may say I have some experience because I had a class here, a class there, but I really don't spend a lot of time in that space. I don't spend a lot of time with couples. And I'm just going to tell you, just like anything, if you don't spend a lot of time doing that specialty, then you're not going to be as good. You may be good, but you're not going to be as good as somebody that's in that space all the time. You know, if I dabble in watercolors once in a while, but my real expertise is photography, um, I'm going to probably have more skills in photography because that's where I spend more of my time and work more than in watercolors. They're both art mediums, but they're different art mediums. And I think that's really important for you to understand. And if you're talking to a therapist and you get the feeling that they, in their mind, there is no distinction between couples work and individual work, then they probably don't. They probably don't have that expertise. So, so the first question is, hey, do you have extra training? Second question is, do you have clients? Do you have a lot of clients that you work in couples? Like percentage, like is half your, half your client load couples? Because if half your client loads couples, then you're pretty guaranteed that that person understands working with couples. The reason why having an expertise as a couples counselor is different is because the skill sets are different. When, when a couple comes into me and they're working with me, I'm not focused on depression. I'm not focused on anxiety. I'm not focusing on bipolar. I'm not focusing on really mental health issues because that's what they should be doing in individual work. And if they do have a lot of anxiety and depression and all kind of that kind of stuff, then maybe, yeah, maybe then I would refer them out and say, hey, probably not appropriate for you to do individual, I mean, do couples work at the moment. You probably do need to do some individual work. So at that point, refer them out. Um, because that's a different skill set. That's a, 
different diagnosis, it's a different focus. And, and so again, I want to make sure that my couples counselor can see that there's a different focus. In couples counseling, I teach three skills, three key important skills. Skill number one, speaker skills. How do you say things in such a way that your partner can take it in, can hear it? So they're, so they're open and, and available to hearing your hurt, your pain, your frustration without getting defensive or, or getting reactive. Second skill is I want to teach the listening skills. I want to teach a way that that person sitting there hearing these hurts, pain, frustration, hearing what's going on with their partner and, and be able to show understanding so their partner feels heard. Because I really think that's what couples counseling, couples counseling is really, because I really think that's what people are coming into couples counseling for. What they're coming in for is to feel heard to feel listened to, to feel understood. But what they really need, I mean, feeling heard, listened to, and understood, absolutely appropriate and very cool. Um, and, and I think individual therapists are really good at that. So it feels like, yeah, I'm getting my needs met by this individual therapist because they're doing a really good job at listening to and hearing you and understanding you. And I think that's great. But it's like that old metaphor of you can give a starving man a fish and they won't starve that day. Or you could st- teach a starving man how to fish and they'll never starve again. And that's really what I'm thinking of in couples counseling is I want to teach these people the skills to speak to each other and the skills to hear each other. Those are the two important skills. And I, I definitely will do that in therapy myself to try and role model that and and basically help my clients do feel heard and understood. But that is not the work at all. The work is to teach them how to do that. Now, I said there's three skills. The third skill that needs to be taught in couples counseling is how to connect, how to love each other. What what is love? How does love work? How, How do you create a loving relationship when Maybe you haven't felt like love. You haven't felt a lot of love in your relationship for a while, and you've kind of felt like roommates. Well, how do you bring back the love in the relationship? That's the third skill set that needs to be taught. So how to speak to each other so each of you can hear each other. How to listen to each other so each of you feel heard, feel understood. And how to love each other. How to connect with one another. Because speaking and listening is great, and I think I think that's really a... a middle goal. I don't think it's really our ultimate goal. It's, it's what we come in asking for and wanting in couples counseling is, you know, we need to talk through our issues. But I think the ultimate goal of when we need to talk to our issues is because we want to connect again and we feel disconnected. And so teaching them how to connect again is, is a whole third set of goals that we're going to work on. All right. So homework assignment for you. I want you to think about writing down some questions. You know, what are your needs? What are your needs as a couple? Maybe not what are your needs as an individual in terms of depression and anxiety and stress and and sadness and grief, but what are your needs in terms of the relationship? What do you need? Do you need to learn to talk to each other? Do you need to learn to connect with one another? Do you need to learn to understand one another? Those are usually the three basics, So, but I want you to write down for you what you need in a relationship. And then as you interview, as you meet with a counselor, ask them these kind of questions. Make sure that couples counseling is something they do a lot of and they have a lot of training about and with and that they're going to teach you the skill sets, the the things that you need to get your needs met. Again, I hope that was helpful. If you have more questions or more concerns about finding a couple's counselor, put them in your comments. I'd love to hear kind of what you're thinking about. Maybe even tell me some stories about maybe some good stories about couple's counseling or maybe some really bad stories. I always love bad stories uh, about couple's counseling. Share them in your comments. I'd love to see them. And um, I'd love to see you also at the gathering as well. Make sure you like and subscribe so you can see more of our videos here. Again, I'm Brett R. Williams, licensed psychotherapist, licensed marriage and family therapist. And I'll talk to you soon. Take care.